the previous tutorial, we learned how to define and run a CW resonator spectroscopy using Lab1Q. However, it often happens for an experimentalist that they need to quickly adapt his experiment to his specific needs and the more information you learn about his sample. Hi, I'm Emilio, and today we learn how to design your own experiment using Lab1Q. In this tutorial, I will assume you're already comfortable with some of the most basic concepts of Lab1Q. How to install it, running, start a session, and apply a basic calibration to your device. I will start by defining a post-resonator spectroscopy, and we will see step-by-step step how this is done in Lab1Q. After that, we are going to run this experiment in two different configurations uh, to send some uh, RF pulses to our resonator over here, using this as a chat QC. Then we will see how to extend this post-resonator spectroscopy from a 1D sweep, where only the frequencies change, to a 2D sweep, where frequency and power sent to the resonator are swept at the same time. You will see how easy it is after you learn the basic to change one experiment to the other using the DSL that Lab1Q provides. Most experiments in Lab1Q begin with a sweep parameter, which is a collection of value that you want to test in your Lab1Q experiment. In this case, we are beginning with a frequency sweep resonator, the linear sweep parameter that starts uh, at a certain frequency and it tests a certain number of frequency given by this parameter count. After that, uh, we are defining our experiment. In this case, it is a pulsed um, spectroscopy and it just needs two signal lines. One measure line to send the RF signal to the cavity and an acquire line to integrate the reflected signal. After that, we are opening our experiment using an acquire loop RT. This effectively defines the T0 of our experiment. From here on, all this instruction will happen inside the device. We are using the acquire looper T instruction to also pass some important metadata. For example, the number of average that you wish to do in your experiment and also what is the acquisition type. In this case, I'm using the acquisition type spectroscopy. Then we are defining a sweep. The sweep is one of the most important uh, concepts in Lab1Q. It allows you to test a multiple value inside your experiment. This is how it works. You are just calling the sweep instruction. You can give it an ID, UID if you wish, and you pass as parameter what you previously defined as a sweep parameter. Whatever is going to come after is actually going to be repeated each time for each parameter inside this array. Next, we are calling a section. Sections are useful uh, tools that allow us uh, to uh, synchronize the pulses that we are sending to the cavity. So in this case, we are using just two lines, so they will happen at the same time. LabWeonQ will try to fit uh, everything that it can inside the logical signal line. We are calling a play instruction measure to send a pulse to our resonator, and in this case, the pulse is this uh, readout pulse that we defined previously, and then we call at the same time an acquire instruction. We are given a handle where this result will be stored and as a length of the integration, we are using exactly the same length as the readout pulse. We are, doing, we are calling one last section called delay that as you can see, we play specifically after spectroscopy using the play after uh, flag. Here we are just uh, waiting for some time, in this case, one microsecond. This is done to allow the resonator to reach again the um, is ground state before we are repeating the RF pulse again. Last thing I need to do is to calibrate the, um, uh, the experimental line that I'm using in this experiment. Here, for example, in the measure line, I am passing this oscillator. Since I want this oscillator to change at each step of the sweep, I actually use as a frequency our sweeps, uh, frequency sweep resonator. This means that the frequency will change at uh, each step of uh, the sweep loop. I am module, as a modulation type, I'm using the hardware. And as you can see, as a central frequency, I pass this frequency allow. I am setting the same frequency allow also for the acquired line, since I want to demodulate at the exactly same central frequency that we use for the measure line. All right. All this that I show you now is actually wrapped around a function that I call the res spectroscopy post. As you can see, most of the parameters that we see before, they're actually passed into this function. 
as a default, we start from a minus 300 megahertz compared to the central frequency to plus under uh, 300 megahertz. We are testing a total of 50 different frequency. The number of average is 16 and we're using a central frequency as default 7 gigahertz. The readout pulse we are also passing as a parameter and in this case is just a square wave of a length of 30 microseconds. All right, so we see how this experiment is getting built. Let's try now to test it on our cavity. As a first thing, uh, let's say I don't exactly know where our resonator lies, so I just want to do a very broad sweep and see uh, if I see any resonance. So as you can see now, I am uh, putting as a frequency stub minus 500 megahertz, as a hand plus 500 megahertz, and I'm testing a total of 100 different frequencies. As we learned in the previous tutorial, I am mapping the measure and acquire line to the logical signal line that I define in my configuration file. Let's run it one time and see what we find. All right, as you can see, we did find a resonance. It's uh, a bit on the left of our center frequency, so it should be a bit below 7 gigahertz. Notice how I'm using our uh, function plot result provided by Lab1Q to automatically plot the result. In this case, I also possess the uh, plus, uh, phase equal true flag, so I have also on the below plot uh, the phase plot that already unwrapped. We do see that the, cha the phase is changing a little bit in the proximity of the resonance, but we are a bit too far away. So let's try to redefine another experiment that looks a bit more in detail what is happening in this resonance. Since I have a function, I just need to call it again using some uh, different parameters. Uh, I want to do a fine scan this time, so I want to really look uh, in detail where this frequency lies. All right, uh, we saw that the frequency was a little bit on the left, so maybe let's shift the center frequency 100 megahertz on the left as well. Let's use uh, 6.9 gigahertz as a, a center frequency. Then the resonance looks rather narrow, so let's maybe scan from minus 10 megahertz to 20 megahertz. All right, let's try to run this. All right, let's see how the result looks like now. As you can see, now we have a much better view on how the resonance looks like. We could even do the scan even narrower, but uh, I think you can already see uh, very well what are the features of this resonance and that the phase is actually changing significantly, significantly in the proximity of its peak. All right, you see how you can change a very rapidly lab one q experiment to suit your need. But many times uh, researchers actually want to uh, do something even more complicated. So, for example, a 2D sweep. Let's say before sending your RF pulse to the resonator, you want to pass through some amplifier and you want to make sure that this amplifier is linear. So it behaves linearly the more power you send to it. Maybe you can learn this by doing a 2D sweep. So same as frequency, you are also sweeping the power to see if you notice something different in the response of the resonator. Let's see how to implement this in lab one q All right, let's try to change these experiments to do a 2D sweep instead. Let's go back to our experiment definition. Now, we said that we want to do a power sweep now together with a frequency sweep. So the first thing that we would need is another sweep parameter. Let's call it mm, power sweep resonator in this case. Let's say I want to start from 0 0.1 as minimum power and arrive up to 1. And uh, I want to test a total of 10 different powers. Okay. Since we are adding one more sweep, we need to add one more sweep instruction to our experiment. So we go back to our experiment description and let's just add one more sweep here. Uh, it's not very important to give a high UD in this case, so let's just pass as parameter our power sweep resonator. As we are in Python, we have to make sure that everything is of course properly indented, so let's do that. All right, so the experiment, we are ready the, the fun in the way we should. Maybe you notice that this time I am putting the sweep parameter before the acquired blue party. This is done because we are doing what is called a near time sweep, which is 
something that is acting on the physical uh, switches of the device. This means it cannot be done in real time, and because of this, we should put it just before the acquired real time loop. There is just one more thing that we need to do now, which is uh, propagate this instruction how to channel switch change to the calibration object. Okay, so now let's go to our calibration and specifically to our experimental signal measure, which is what is sending the RF pulse to the cavity. And we just need to use one more keyword, amplitude, and we pass our powers V press on it. And we are done. I changed three lines of code that I transformed this experiment from a 1D sweep to a 2D sweep that is sweeping frequency and power at the same time. Let's see how it works when we are actually running it. All right, let's run exactly what we ran before. So a course experiment. It will for sure take a little bit more for once because we are doing a near time sweep and for the other because it's a 2D sweep. Let's plot the result now. And there you go. Exactly as expected, we see a narrow line of color exactly where the resonant would lie. And we are seeing at the same time how the phase is changing in this 2D space. Notice how our function plot result automatically detected that the result is now changing in a 2D object and is adapting the plotting automatically. Let's do again the same thing with the file result. And it's done. A total of 12 seconds, we are testing a total of 1000 frequency at 10 different power. Let's plot this again. There you go. We have no big surprises. The powers, the, um, the maximum response of the resonator lies exactly at its peak, and it looks fairly linear with the power that we sent to the resonator, exactly as we expected. Thanks for tuning in in this tutorial. I hope this teaches you how to create your own experiment in lab one q that is exactly right for your lab. For more documentation, you find everything on our GitHub, included how to build your pulse resonator spectroscopy and more complicated experiment.